My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome back to Railway... No, 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 try that again, shall we? To Transport Fever 2, this is not Railway Empire, not at all. Yes, welcome back to Transport Fever 2. We're starting today by the viaduct on the outskirts of Axbridge, and we're looking in towards Axbridge there, which has grown to a very respectable size indeed. And my plan for today is to do some more work with the goods factory that we got set up in the previous episode. Now, I haven't yet seen the comments from the latest, from the last episode, due to the way I record the episodes. Um, so some of you may have already picked up on this and left a comment about it, but I will address it first of all, because it's something I picked up on as well. So bonus marks for those of you who did mention or pick up on this or spot this during the last episode. What we're going to do, bring up the UI straight away. We're going to head over to the goods factory, which is over here. Now there was a, there was a, yeah, trying to get this running as fast as we possibly could, you know, a decent production, decent output value on this industry. Now, some of you may have noticed I had this train here, we have one alongside at the moment, picking up goods and taking them to the George Stevenson station. Of course, I hadn't done anything above and beyond that, so there was no demand for goods at George Stevenson station. So, the way we left it in the previous episode, this train would have been waiting forever and a day because there's no call for goods down here so the goods weren't being produced to be taken down there so what I've done in between episodes is I have set up a road delivery line from George Stevenson station into Hearn Bay that takes the goods so if we bring up the line manager we can see right here we have a new line that comes into this new station picks up goods and then heads over to Hearn Bay to deliver them so now we have a reason to bring the goods down here. We are starting to see some production. And in fact, if we look at this train here, we can see we have a full load of goods already on the way. And the train that we had up at the station, let's have a look how you're doing in terms of your capacity. You're at 22 out of 24. So while the uh, this isn't kicking out at full speed just yet, hopefully by the end of today's episode, we'll be making good progress towards achieving that. One other thing before we get started proper, I've had a uh, comment suggestion for the name of this station here by the Plastics Factory. Quite an amusing one and uh, I will caveat this by saying this is not intended to uh, make a political statement or anything like that, but it, uh, it made me chuckle so I went, uh, went ahead and went with it. And we have the Greta Thunberg station because we're dealing with plastic and uh, I'm sure she would love that. Like I said, that's not intended to make any sort of statement or promote or belittle any sort of uh, viewpoint. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say crusade. Crusade is perhaps a little bit negative depending on context. But yes, uh, thank you for the suggestion. It made me laugh, so I've gone ahead and used it. We have the Greta Thunberg station supplying oil and plastic. So let's get started. Now, what I'm gonna do is at this point, I'm gonna increase the date progression speed to one times acceleration as we can see here. The reason I'm making the change from half to full speed is because we've connected up to pretty much all of the industries or at least the, the final industries. And I don't want this series to end in 1970, for instance. So by setting it to one time speed, we might pass through the uh, the next 20 to 30 years a little bit faster than usual, but it does mean we should get to a stage where we're still uh, active on this map, but we're able to deploy some more modern trains, the, uh, the trains from the year 2000 and on. Okay then, so all that being said, how do we intend to get this production increased. Well we already have one line taking goods into Hearn Bay and if you remember we also have a line taking goods into Epping. Both of those are using trucks to deliver the goods. Of course we have to get the, the goods down to here on a train but what I'd like to do today is have two more trains 
or at least one more train and one modified train to take the goods from this station into Axbridge and into Long Eaton. Now as it stands we already have a train that heads to Axbridge and in fact it's just on its way here and this takes machinery into Axbridge. Now because it uses the boxcars we can go ahead and have this train also pick up goods to drop off into the, uh, the freight yard up here and then get them picked up and dropped into wherever they need to be in the city. So to achieve that the first thing we're going to do is set up a new delivery line for Axbridge that runs from the exchange into the city with a view to taking the goods. So let's first of all check where are the goods needed in Axbridge. So if we get an unload point, let's have a look. Can we see the goods icon anywhere? Yep, it's over here. And we actually have a drop-off point in the area already. So we don't need to add a third. Would it be a third? Yes, we don't need a third drop-off point for Axbridge. We can just share this one. So let's set up a new line that runs from here to here. We want it, what color? Mm. Now we don't want it to be the same as the food, however, the color of the goods is quite similar to the food, but I might go for this salmon one. It's close-ish if you squint, or if you're colorblind like me, I suppose, but it does distinguish it from this line here. So if you're coming down here, Please tell me you've opted to pick up a spare platform. You have, but the way you're accessing that platform is a little bit unusual. Okay, well what if we have you come all the way down onto platform 6 and then have you come in this way. So to do that, we'll just leave that in its current state. Let's go ahead and put a couple of waypoints in and around here just so we can tell the line to come this way in and this way out. Uh, let's use the phone box up here. Now go back to the line manager. So after park lane, if you come that way, what will you do? Yes, that's nice, that's nice. And then what we want you to do is not to go out that way. So after the exchange, you want to come this way out. And then you're coming up here, up here, up and around, dropping off at Park Lane, heading down here. Yep, that should be okay. So we'll call this the Axbridge Goods Delivery, like so. Just head back to that line. And over here, we want to make sure that you are picking up goods and nothing else. Yes, okay. I, th in fact, let me just, just wait a second. I've just had an idea. Where are now the machinery is being dropped off here? I thought we could use the same truck. Now it could do a split drop, but I think we'll just have a separate dedicated line for the goods. So disregard all of that. So let's go ahead and buy some vehicles to deliver those goods. So cargo. We noted that the Sauer trucks were inferior to the Opals. So we'll stick with the Opals and you will be the Blitz tarpaulin trucks. Now, I don't think we're going to need many for this, so I'm going to start with just five at a cost of 1.6 million. Assign them onto that line there. And then what we want to do is, are you... No, that's not the right train. Have you already dropped off and are now heading back, or have I just missed you? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We can uh, pick it up here, look. So machinery into Axbridge, what we want to do now is manage this line so it picks up machinery, shall we say a 50-50 split. I believe this will work and it should come up with a full load, half of which will be machines, half of which will be goods. But we shall check that obviously when the train returns. So in theory now, if I've done it correctly, some of the goods that are being dropped into George Stevenson Station should now be loaded onto Platform 4 at George Stevenson Station for this line to pick up and take on into Axbridge. This to me means now that we need 
a different line name for this one, so we'll just call it Machinery Stroke Tools to Axe Bridge. It's not tools, it's goods. Machinery and goods into Axe Bridge. So what we want to do now is just wait to see if that works as intended. I'm not sure if it will. Who are you? Now we are going up to Epping. We don't need to uh, do anything with you because Epping receives the goods via trucks. So let's see if that works. Hopefully our train... Oh, is that the one? Yes, you're the one, aren't you? Hopefully you will start loading up with goods when you return over to George Stevenson Station, provided we have some goods available for you. Uh, your steel, just seeing if we have one of the goods trains on the way. Now you've still not left the station, although you're almost full. Just another eight units and then you'll be able to leave, or six units. Let's see. Yeah, you've got plenty of steel and it is just a one to one to one. So we don't need to worry about providing double steel or double plastic for this. So we'll just speed up the date or the game speed to allow this train to depart. I mean, we could depart it manually. Should we do that? Yeah, let's send him on its way manually. We do have a train or a second train should be yeah, on the way there. So any overspill, this second train will be able to pick it up anyway. So I just want to see if this will work as I hope it will. And our train, which hasn't yet arrived at George Stevenson, will handle both commodities, goods and machinery. We've unlocked the Douglas DC-4, but the likelihood of seeing any aircraft on this map is uh, a little low, because it's only a small map. It is a long map, so we could have a a line perhaps from Epping, an airline I should say, from Epping to Long Eaton just for the sake of it, but uh, we shall see. So here comes our train now, so you should only load up with half machinery, which it looks like you're going to do if you pick up another two. Ah, you've departed. Now we don't want that, we want you to turn around and go back. In fact, let's just quickly pause it, go to this line, full load all. Ah, is that classing this as a full load then when it gets to half? I can never quite remember how this works, so we shall see. Now go back and then stop. Where are you going now? Don't go through that way. Right, so when you come to a halt, we're going to stop you. So you're now unloading the goods. Will you load the goods? Or is it because you can't have two on the same platform? I hope that's not the case, because that would be uh, a little bit unfortunate. Let's try something else. Let's go. Let's go back to this line. Manage the line and set these to 100 and see what happens but I think you can't have two different good types on this platform I shall have to test that and see we should slow the game back down now is there a way we can turn that train around to head back although there's no goods here is there which is all the goods have been placed onto this uh, this this uh, truck station here in the meantime we probably want to go ahead and put a couple of cargo buildings on there just to increase the capacity so we'll do that anyway right so how are we going to make this work I am stumped I tell you what I'll just pause the date speed run it at four times put a cut in here while I do some digging and some thinking about this as to how to get this to work of course, that, uh, that is assuming it is possible to make a line such as this work. It may not be, I'm not sure. We shall soon find out. But we do have goods coming back now. And those goods should arrive before our train returns. Because our train hasn't even unloaded the machines yet. We definitely have a line to pick up the goods. We did make sure, we did tell them to pick up goods, didn't we? Let's just, uh, let's just verify that. Yes, you're picking up goods, okay. 
It's not because you're not instructed to unload goods at this station. If we can click the train, that would be great. Manage line. And now you can unload anything you like. Okay, then. It must be because you can't have two different commodities on one platform. And that's my gut feeling about this. Which is unfortunate. I don't see why that way you shouldn't be able to do that. It would make sense because I'm sure in reality you can have mixed goods on a cargo platform without any problems. And anyway, here comes our train now, full of goods. Let's just hear, see what happens to all of these goods. My, I think they're just going to all be dumped onto this this uh, station here. Let's see, if you get 88. Ah, no, no you didn't. Okay, so it does work. There's the goods. Look, we have some goods on this platform as well. Brilliant, so it does work, it just needs to balance itself. Okay, so we can uh, go back to normal now. There we go. So we know now that this can work. We just probably have to set it to 100% uh, load. Which is fine, which is fine. We'll just see uh, what knock-on effects that will have in a few moments. In the meantime, what we can do is, can do, what we can do, is think about setting up a line from George Stevenson down into... Long Eaton. I think we have spare platforms down here. Well, we have one spare platform, which is well, that's all we need, so that's that's not a problem. And do you have reach over there? Yes, you do. Now, all three of these are being used, so what we're going to have to do is add a second platform on this station here, and probably another couple of cargo buildings as well while we're at it, like that. And the first thing we'll do is set up the truck delivery line. So let's see where the goods in Long Eaton are required. Let's see here. Ah, they're all the way up here, which means we can share the station at Mill Lane. So let's get a line from this station here to Mill Lane. Your, we'll go for the salmon colour again. Uh, load if available, but we want to make sure that you're only taking goods with you. And you are looping over here, but there's, that's because we don't have a second entry or exit. But what I'd like you to do is not come over here. I'd like you to come and take this bridge. So after the freight exchange, I want you to go that way. And after Mill Lane, come that way. And that just means we're not going to get held up by passing rail traffic. So that's fine. Let's just quickly rename this one then. So this will be the Long Eaton Goods Delivery. Pick up a couple of vehicles to run on this line. And again, I think I'll go for five of those. Set them on the way. Long Eaton Goods Delivery, there you are. Now what we can do is set up a new line from George Stevenson Station. Do we have a spare platform though? Uh, yes we do, this one right here. So let's go George Stevenson Station, we'll make you salmon. We want you to full load all, loading goods. And you're coming down here, all the way down here. You'll well, you could go either way, actually. Could you? No, you couldn't. But we could make it come this way if we connected this platform into this line here. But instead, we'll just have it pass through here. Come down into Long Eaton Freight Exchange. Onto platform number four. Ah, you can't connect all stations. Okay, then. Let's see. Why not? Why can't you come down here? You should be able to if this one can get this way. I don't see why the other one cannot. Well, let's just guide it in. So after George Stevenson Station, we want you to come that way. And then we want you to come down here. Do we have any signals down here to use as waypoints? Okay. Oh, I know what it'll be. We don't have a diamond here. That's a problem. Okay, well, we can 
can very quickly sort that out, can't we? It shouldn't take too long at all. There's our diamond. And now go back and now set you to platform four. Now you're happy. Okay, that was a problem. We don't have a, a way to get back over. Well, that's all taken care of and you're coming yet this way. Do we want you to come in that way or do we want you to come through here? I dare say we want you to come through here. So let's add a waypoint there. And then let's have a waypoint there. Because this is just a pass through, uh, a pass through platform. We might want to double track it, which we can do a little bit later. Uh, whereas these two, well, yeah, these are loading on this platform. Whereas this one, we only see unloading occurring. So the train shouldn't be here for very long. So we shouldn't be waiting around too much to pass on through. But like I said, we might want to adjust that a little bit later anyway. Other than that, everything should be all fine. You just make sure you've gone to the right platform at George Stevenson. You should be, yep, you're on the spare platform, which is this one here. That's great. So this is goods and machinery to long eaten. Okie dokie. Now what we also need to do is make sure we have a machinery delivery line for Long Eaton, which at the moment we do not. So, uh, well, we can't put another platform here. Well, we could. We could just remove these. But I think what we'll do instead is just provide them with a dedicated truck station for the machinery like this. And it can be, you can nestle right in there. There's no harm in that. Uh, let's just rename this to the Long Eaton Freight Exchange. Like that. And then let's see where is the machinery needed. Let's see here. Oh, it's over here, is it? So you can use that drop off point then, right there at King's Way. So let's get a new line. This can be this silver colour. You are only loading machinery. After the freight exchange, you're coming this way, so you're taking the bridge over the rail line. You're dropping off at King's Way. And then you're coming back down this way. Yes, you are. I can just about see the silver there. Hitting that waypoint to take the bridge, heading in there. That's fine. So this is the uh, machinery delivery along Eton. And again, we're not going to need too many, so I'll just go for a starting point of five. There we go. We have to do that first, of course, because otherwise there's no call for the machinery in this area. So now there is that draw for the machinery from George Stevenson. So now we've got the train line set up. We have the two truck lines set up. So we can go ahead and purchase ourselves a train. So let's have a look here then. What do we have? I think it's going to be the A35 again. There's no need for anything bigger than that, I dare say. And let's, in fact, yeah, let's do you want to. No, let's have it in its default colour because it is mixed cargo. And yep, yeah, we'll go for 88 capacity again. I think one for the time being is going to be more than enough, but we shall see. Put you on the goods machinery line to Long Eaton and you should now be on your way well you're just waiting for clearance but yes to all intents and purposes you are indeed on your way out and as soon as this train clears you should come forwards and in fact what we could do just to pull him forward just a little bit is put a two way signal just there for an extra block and yet you're now starting to pull out of the depot Okay, so I think, do we have any other freight coming into here that we haven't yet handled? No, once uh, these lines start delivering, then Long Eaton has all of its required freight. Hearn Bay does not. We don't have bricks or food or fuel, so we'd have to take care of that at some point. What about Axbridge? Uh, just fuel, because we have 
we have seen that the goods are being produced or being dropped onto this platform for collection and in fact this train should have some of them on board already and there we got eight on there so yeah it's not it's not balancing it 50 50 but that's fine because oops they don't need you know they need more machines than they do as a proportion to good so that's fine if they're not 50 50 split on the train that's the same of course for long eaten as well where they need to slightly well over double the machines compared to goods so again if the train isn't a pure 50 50 split it doesn't matter at all what about epping we have fuel we don't have machinery we do have a good supply of machines so we don't have tools we do have machines and goods we could do have been increased perhaps that just means we need more road vehicles on this line how many do we have at the moment only five and they are going a, uh, a fair old distance so I'm just going to go ahead and double them up to 10 total and see what that does for us. We might need a better or a stronger supply of steel, but as we can see here, a few of the trains, or the trucks I should say, and they're not trains are they, these are running, well in fact almost all of them are running empty, we have one there with some on board, but as we can see we're picking up less than half of our capacity on this line. So what's the problem here? It's a supply of iron. Now I have made a change to the iron line. We now have two trains and they're fairly long trains running the iron line. And let's see how they're doing in terms of profitability. Oh, we have three. I do apologise. We have three of them. Let's go back to that train. So they're profitable every other year, which is fine. Again, we're making enough money with our other lines that if a few of them aren't making as much as they possibly could, then so be it. But clearly we uh, we probably want more iron being brought in down here. We have a good supply up here. Our industry is at level 4, producing 1,600 units of iron per year. This line has a throughput of, let's have a look, 982 so we can't double the amount of trains but we could have a fourth one and still be within the 1600 units that are being produced here so we wouldn't be running this dry so shall we add another or shall we just perhaps put a few more wagons onto each of these i think the best thing to do is probably add a extra wagons we don't want too much traffic on the lines so let's go to the gondolas let's put them orange and let's yeah let's I think it's another five we'll keep it in the excellent rating so that's what we'll go for so that's 240 capacity so that's 120 overall and we'll see what that does in terms of keeping this fully supplied at all times so we don't have any uh, slowdown on the production of the steel coal is absolutely fine we have a huge surplus of coal 92,000 units in fact which is not a problem Okay then, so I think that's where we'll call a halt today. Uh, before I do go into the outro, there's one other thing I want to mention that I forgot to mention. Uh, I had another comment from Benjamin Corey about perhaps having some extra mods and assets, uh, especially when it comes to detailing our towns that we're creating manually. I have gone ahead and uh, downloaded some extra ones, so as you can see here, we have a lot more options available. Um, we do have where I can't find well I'd have to remind myself of which is which but we have for example shop signs that we can put in the town so we've got Tesco Express uh, there's McDonald's Aldi KFC uh, so we could use them to decorate our towns as well I did get there uh, we've got some bikes I forgot about that but yeah we've got bikes motorbikes and uh, push bikes and I do have some houses that come with gardens and these are very UK themed houses as we can see and we can see here look we can enable fence, enable garden, we can also enable population, we can add a street so we don't have to build the streets ourselves the, uh, the house will create the street for us and we can have them on both sides as well and if we look at we do have a uh, little assets in the garden so we've got a little chair there some trees in some of them uh, we've got a little swing uh, patio table 
So yeah, I wanted to draw attention to that. So the amount of mods we now have running on this series, I think we're now in excess of 200. 99% of which are just uh, scenery mods. So they're not crucial to the game, but they do make building a town a little bit more enjoyable because you have more options available. So when we come to build our next town, which, if shall we say the next episode, because we know we're going to have it up here somewhere, and we've got the line halfway there already. Uh, yeah, so in the next episode we'll see some of these new mods being deployed. Uh, these new assets, I should say. Well, they are mods, but they're asset, asset mods. And there's, yeah, there's quite a few available. I'd, like I said, I'd have to go through them just to remind myself what is in what category and what icon. But yeah, we've got plenty to choose from, so we should be able to make a nice, uh, unique looking town that doesn't have too much repetition. Okay then, so what we need to do now is get a, get a train and have a cab ride for our outro. Which train do we want to use? Well, we could use the new train that's going down to Long Eaton for the uh, mission, which is this one right here, because it's the only one in the uh, base livery. So what we'll do, we'll uh, put a cutting here, get to George Stevenson, and then we'll hop on board and have a ride down to Long Eaton. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the train now. We're heading empty. That's uh, just for the purposes of the outro. And it will also give the industry time to kick up production to produce the extra machines and goods that are now required to to keep this new line as well supplied as possible. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. It's uh, strange to think that we're connected up. I think it's every industry now. There's a couple of the raw material industries that haven't been connected, which will likely not need to be connected, but that's okay. In terms of our... F uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Our commodity industries, that you know, the ones that are actually required by the towns. We are now connected to all of them. Of course, not everyone is going into every town as we saw about 10 minutes ago, but that's fine. At least we have the infrastructure in place and we can think about getting the uh, the last few commodities in the, to the last remaining towns in the next few episodes. However, as I said, the next episode itself uh, will go back to town building to extend our rural train line, which is now running the Flying Scotsman, if you recall about three or four episodes ago we made that change so yes like i said i hope you've enjoyed the episode as always comments suggestions feedback always welcome if you have enjoyed then i'd humbly ask that you consider hitting that like button down below because it really does help it it helps youtube uh, attract a wider audience it promotes the video to new viewers and the more we can get then uh, the better we get a nice little community going but for now, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.